As we know, global norms such as gender equality in and through the media travel through time and space. They are diffused and adopted, negotiated and contested at regional, national and local levels due to different understanding of inequality issues and different socio-economic, cultural and political conditions. As we have seen, the language of policy reflects underlying assumptions as to how and why gender inequality issues emerge. And clearly, these assumptions may change in different contexts depending on political, economic, cultural and social situations. What we do know is that in different locales, different interpretations of gender equality are negotiated when and where such global norms are translated into policy and into social practices. Here I would like to give a few examples of how these uh, norms uh, of gender equality in and through the media have traveled through space uh, and have been translated into uh, provisions adopted uh, in different regional frameworks. In the Latin American context, uh, gender inequality issues in the media have been framed uh, in their interaction with the need to prevent gender-based violence since the adoption of the Inter-American Convention on the Prevention, Punishment and Eradication of All Violence Against Women in 1995. Paragraph 8 of the Convention speaks directly to communication media, encouraging them to develop appropriate media guidelines in order to contribute to the eradication of violence against women in all its forms and to enhance respect for the dignity of women. In Southern Africa, the Protocol on Gender and Development adopted by the Southern African Development Community in 2008 introduced three different paragraphs to deal with the role of media in fostering gender equality. Here, the wording refers to encouraging media bodies to mainstream gender in their codes and policies, discouraging depicting women as helpless victims, and fostering open and participatory processes in order to ensure women and girls access to ICT. Most recently, the European Parliament made a proposal for a resolution on gender equality in the media sector, calling on both media organizations and member states to adopt adequate measures to promote gender equality. Here again, the framing of issues is different. Public and private media organizations are invited to adopt policies such as anti-harassment measures, parental leave schemes, flexible working arrangements, while states are invited to fully implement existing legislation addressing gender equality and to encourage regulatory bodies to monitor and assess the advancement of women in the media sector. One final aspect that we may want to consider is how policies have also been developed to indicate how language should be used in order to promote gender equality also through the media. And in this way, it has articulated a politics of gender sensitive language in use. Here again, we may start from recalling efforts that have been conducted at the international level, particularly by the UNESCO. As early as 1999, UNESCO published its guideline on gender-neutral language, dealing with ambiguity of expression, stereotyping through language, and the unequal use of personal titles to address women and men. UNESCO also published a series of recommendations for a non-sexist use of the Spanish language, highlighting the challenges deriving from the use of masculine as a universal standard as well as asymmetries and mistakes that are made when gender unequal norms interfere with linguistic grammar and syntaxes. Similar efforts have been made at the national level to provide guidelines for the use of gender fair language in public administration, universities, as well as the media. In some cases, media organizations themselves have adopted codes of reference for the use of gender fair language. In other cases, guidance has been provided by media professional associations and very often by feminist women's journalist organizations. 
Recent examples from Italy include a publication by the Italian National Council of Journalists titled A Whole Different News Gender. In this volume, a whole section is devoted to analyzing the language of news from a gender perspective and to provide guidelines for gender fair reporting. Also, the Association of Women Journalists, Giulia, and a Jemi partner, elaborated a small and easy to use guide for journalists and newsroom titled Women, Grammar and Media Guidelines for the Use of the Italian Language. Giulia continues to work in this direction by promoting a manifesto against all forms of violence and discrimination through words and images that has been adopted in 2017. In this section, we have seen how the use of language in media policy documents and measures is very relevant not only to define gender inequality issues, but also to construct gender inequality as a problem when it comes to media communication and the news. And we have also seen that in recent years, more and more efforts have been made to elaborate policies that touch precisely on the very use of language, thereby developing a politics for a fair use of language in the media, in due consideration that inclusive and respectful language is crucial to make gender equality in and through the media a reality.